All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of How Do I Do This Anyways? Uh, today's topic of conversation, we're going to be running a stress test. <laughs> yeah. Stress test on our delightful little boxes here. So I've got my little box here. I would advise you to use yours instead of mine. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when we go ahead and we try to make an analysis on this, we are going to come here to this environments tab. And we're going to click stress analysis. And one of the things that it's going to want us to do is to assign a material type. You see, you have to um, assign a material in order to actually do your stress test. Because right now, if I click this, it says generic up there. And the generic material um, strengths and whatnot are zeros. So you can't have that. What we need to do is now we have to actually assign a material to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this little button right here. And I'm going to create a material because if I scroll on down through the library here, I'm going to notice that the PLA that we know and love to print with does not actually exist here. So I'm going to choose to create a material. But before I do that, I need to make sure that I'm in the right units. So I'm going to click here and say Dis set display units. And I want to make sure that I'm in metric standard MPA KG J. Okay. <laughs> Next, I'm going to click this little circle with the plus in order to create my own material. And I'm just going to call it uh, PLA. And I want to call this, uh, let's call it orange. I want it to be orange PLA. And we're going to just type that as a description. PLA, orange in color. You can make it whatever color you feel like. I might suggest you make it the color that you're going to actually have it 3D printed in. Uh, type, we want to make sure that it knows that this is a plastic. And as far as this product information, if you were getting a specific product from a specific manufacturer, you could include all of this information in your documentation and it would store that in the model. Um, the only thing we need here is the URL that we're going to pick all of this information the mechanical and strength, which I went ahead and went online already to find that information. There's this neat little website called MatWeb, and they look at all kinds of materials and they test them. So what I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting the link to the website. So that way I can just have it right here in my documents. That way if anything changes or if I want to double check a number, I know exactly where it came from. Now, my appearance tab, this is where you're going to be able to change the color. What color did I say it was? Orange. Cool. So I'm going to select an orange color. You can define custom colors here and select any color of the rainbow you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to select that one. It reminds me enough of Michelangelo. So we're going to go with that one. Click OK. And it should pop up as orange right there. That's orange enough for me. Now, as far as our physical properties are concerned, um, we're not worried about heat right now, so we're going to leave these alone with the thermal conductivity and all that stuff. But what we do need to do is we need to make sure that we are changing this. We want the behavior to be considered isotropic because it doesn't matter what direction the forces are acting, it always behaves the same. The Young's modulus, you can pull from here. And that is actually for PLA 2.34 gigapascals. Then we need the density. I found that to be 1.3. Our yield strength, let's see here. The is 41.9 and the tensile strength we found to be 59.5. Those were all megapascals. And now we're going to click OK. And now we've got this thing here. So that's going to be our material. I'm going to click X. And I'm going to highlight this whole thing. And now I'm going to click here. And I should be able to find my PLA in there. PLA orange. Click it. It turned blue. Well, that's peculiar. Whatever. It changed it. <laughs> I 
like that. It says it's orange. That's bothering me. Here we go. Now it's orange. Yay, I'm happy. All right, so now that we've changed our material, go ahead and save your work. Yes to all. Okay. It's a happy orange color. Yay. Are you happy? I'm happy. Don't worry, it does this a lot. There we go, now it's happy. Now we need to come over here into the environments tab. And the environments tab gives us the option to do this stress analysis environment. So we're gonna click on that. And now we wanna go ahead and create a study, okay? All of these delightful things, uh, they will select, if, or they will cause different stuff when you select them later. We don't need to worry about that right now. We're gonna click okay. Parametric table, we don't have to worry about that. Assigning material, if you click on that, it should pop up as all of this stuff is orange and all this stuff. You're getting all of these exclamation points because it can't find those parts. Uh, let's see here. Thin bodies, we don't need to worry about thin bodies or offsets. However, we do need to fix a constraint, okay? So we're going to fix the bottom as not moving, okay? A fixed constraint means that you do not allow that surface to move. You can also say it's frictionless, it can rotate about a pin, etc., etc. We're just gonna do a fixed constraint on the bottom because the bottom is gonna be holding up the top and the top is gonna be holding up the weight. And speaking of the weight, the force we want to apply, we're gonna apply that on the top. I told you a minimum of 20 pounds, so go ahead and type that in. LBS if you prefer, but it should automatically pop that unit in there. And now we're going to apply that 20 pounds. See, 20 pound force. Now, close that on out. Now, we're going to go ahead and say automatically generate contacts. And it's going to pop up possibly an error about the pin, um, depending on how you constrained your pin. As long as your top and your bottom are in contact, life is PG. Click your mesh view, and what that's going to do is it's going to turn those nice, large, rectangular surfaces into itty-bitty polygons. So, let's see what shape that it makes this time. Ooh, a lot of triangles. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and simulate it. And it's going to say, hey, we got a problem. Yeah, the pin. No one cares. See, it put in a soft spring as the pin. Life was peachy. That looks good. Gosh. Close that right on out. Look at that. So what we're looking at here is that the stress for the Von Mrs. Stress Test analysis is this area is has very little stress actually associated with it, whereas you get a lot of stress here. Now, stress is like the deformation. The easier way to look at that is displacement. So if I double click on the displacement test and I look at that, I can see that where I'm applying the weight gets the most displacement, whereas the rest of the box gets the minimum displacement. I can also look at it just as a standard stress analysis where you would expect the weight to be carried the most and to change the form in these areas along the corners. You can look at third principle stress where it's going to apply it differently and distribute it across different areas. You can also look at the safety factor. That safety factor is what I'm actually interested in. You see, we asked for it to hold 20 pounds. The sides will apply a safety factor of 15 times that 20. I don't know if I'd test that, but it could. Then we've got this nice green area on the top where it's saying it's ish six to seven times 20 pounds. So that's pretty all right. This is what you want a screenshot of. You can also do, make sure you get something along those lines so you can easily see the color coding. You can see that it's a safety factor. You can see everything that you want. Okay. Now, furthermore, we're going to go ahead and finish this study because we want to go back out to our model. And then all of a sudden our study disappears. In order to get back to your study, you have to go back to that environment of the stress analysis environment. And then we can go ahead and we can go back into our stress analysis. Or we could go ahead and create a new study. 
Okay. If you wanted to increase your weight, if you wanted to distribute it differently, you could do all those things. Okay. So hopefully this video helped you out to create your different unique materials. Hopefully you were able to get a color you like and get something that actually looks like your box. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, take care.